guys how's it going welcome back to another episode of cosmograph talks now recently we've had all musicians and my musician friends um because well a lot of people know me as a musician and i'm very interested in the whole music thing obviously but i'm also really interested in what some of you might know the whole streetwear culture and the whole you know sneaker thing that's really something that i'm really into and i just wanted to get somebody on that would you know give an insight into that so people who are interested in this kind of content can also get um uh, content that they can relate to and they can you know sort of just access so today i have ambar uh, if you guys don't know who ambar is he is the founder and main man behind uh, 65 street and interestingly he is also a junior from school so right uh it's quite yeah. interesting that there was this thing organized by sahil uh, sahil nandal last year which is called like the home court um thing that he organized in delhi and i went for that and i was just roaming around and i saw uh, and this guy just comes up to me and he goes like oh dude that's an interesting lacing combination on a shoe and i just saw it and i was like dude what are you doing here and he was looking at me going like wait what are you doing here <laughs> and then he was like oh you should come check this out you know i have this brand i've created and everything so i was like dude that's insanely cool and i was so happy that day i was going like okay there's at least somebody from dps rk puram who's doing something worthwhile that's just beyond like i got a job <laughs> you know <laughs> you're firing shots today man you're firing you're i mean it's true shots. it's true mostly like what do dps rk puram kids do they're good at academics and they're good at their job cool who isn't <laughs> so um i was quite surprised so and obviously you know we've been in touch since then and i've been following uh, your stuff for a while and i really like the stuff i have some items myself uh, that right. you know i wear from time to time now obviously i can't really you know <laughs> <laughs> now i don't think anyone cares to what you're wearing to be honest as yeah. long as like if if you're on a stream then maybe but otherwise yeah. no one really even you know, on a stream like nowadays i'm just thinking as long as i wear a solid color it's okay like nobody really cares uh, <laughs> and nowadays because i'm working out every day now i just when i like get dressed up after having a shower i'm like okay i'm just going to dress up in something that i know i can soak later in the day and throw away so guys you know we've stopped ironing our clothes at home like we don't iron our clothes anymore. yeah There's why, no why should why do you need to iron clothes and waste electricity for that like you're not going to go outside or do anything of that sort so <laughs> So, yeah, so and 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 the consistent like the consistent outfit is everyone is wearing a pair of shorts and a t-shirt that, yeah it's hot it, dude that, it's incredibly hot like <laughs> and it's going it's to get bad. even hotter so um i do miss my hoodies and i do miss my because i'm the most comfortable in hoodies like i could wear hoodies every day if it wasn't hot um so uh, i'm just sort of waiting for all of this to finish down so that i can finally start wearing my hoodies but other than that let's talk about you cuz um how did this in- entire thing from being a school person to going to college to then you know coming with this whole concept of a brand in itself come about because i don't think anybody knows that um it it was so there's there's a there's a big like there's no one starting point that i can tell you that this is where it started and this is where everything went from where it did but uh, so yeah i graduated like i think i graduated a year after you did uh, I, yeah. so i i graduated in 2014 and then i uh, was lucky enough to go abroad for college at, at that time um so i was in la for four years i was at the university of southern california and i uh, studied international relations and business but uh, to my interest in everything like i was i was a sports person i don't know if you remember i played yeah, yeah you played yeah the school team yeah, yeah. Uh, so for me it started with the sports wear side of thing like that's what i really want to get into that's what i had been wanting to get into for a while because in india it was either you chose between nike adidas puma or whatever or you chose between shivnarish yeah and uh, you know that like there was no in between there was no mm-hmm. Only, it was only like uh, big brands and yeah know. it was either big brand or just shit like yeah, just yeah, yeah. absolute you know like the absolute base of the base yeah so for me and my sister who also played basketball she's my co-founder um for both of us it was more about putting our passion together with something that we had access to in terms of infrastructure so my like my family's company was into manufacturing and we had access to that infrastructure very easily 
which was something that we could utilize and bring to the mainstream. But uh, there we were working was very much like a manufacturer. So mm-hmm. they thought, yeah, volume, yeah, yeah. Volume, okay, volume. yeah, yeah, yeah. More about and just then, mass production and... Exactly. And we, we did not think that way because we didn't think that was a viable model. Because there was already companies doing mass. And I'm not saying mass is a bad way to go about things. I'm just saying mass doesn't really cut it for me personally. So I would not want to sell something that I myself don't like wear. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day. Like if if I'm selling you a, a jersey, which if I went out in the field, I wouldn't be happy wearing, then I'm just not doing anything worth it. So for me, that's why it didn't make sense for us to go into a whole mass product line. And we wanted to kind of be that middle ground between, uh, you know, one of the super brands and the, the absolute crush. So that's where the whole idea started from. And um, it went from, so I graduated in 2018. A lot of people don't know this, but in the middle of college, I took a, a semester off from school okay. to come back and work on this uh, this project that my family had started. Okay. Which was in the sports industry, but they were doing exactly what they what I just told you. So yeah, they were doing just mass, mass production. Art. Yeah. Yeah, and they licensed the brand. Um, we licensed the brand called Admiral. Uh, you will you are in the UK, so you probably know the brand. Yeah, yeah I British do. Brand. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we licensed the brand, and we were bringing it here, and so on and so forth. So I took a I took a gap semester, which was a good eight months because a semester and then summer. Yeah. And I was here working, trying to make stuff happen. And in fact, I was going to drop out of school. I didn't want to go back. I thought, you know, I thought I'd found what I wanted to do and I wanted to stick with it. But knowing knowing our parents and knowing Desi parents and like the... It's like, get your degree, <laughs> but, then you can do whatever you want. But make sure you exactly, get that degree. <laughs> exactly. So, because of that, I, I did this. And then there was stuff which was on track to start going to happen. We signed a couple of ISL teams on board as well with the brand. Uh, so we had Kerala Blasters and FC Pune City and a bunch of stuff was going on. And I said, okay, fine, I'll go back, but don't stop me from working from there. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm going to be working. I'm going to have, like, I can't just let this be and go back and live a college life again. Yeah. Like, that's just not, I won't be able to think of it that way. So I went back and uh, I finished four years of college in three and a half, essentially, because I didn't mm-hmm. take an extra semester. To go to college. Oh, so you just caught up. I killed myself. Yeah, I mean, uh, although, like, um, I mean, if people don't really have context, this is for people who haven't studied in the Indian education system. Our education system was very grueling. Um, (laughs) So I think we, more than other people, are just used to, like, killing ourselves when it comes to studies or when it comes to, you know, just school because we're so used to it. Um, yeah, yeah, we're, 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 we're so uh, much in a part of that rat race that we have to come first or we have to be yeah. there or we, or we won't be relevant that we kind of push ourselves harder anyway. Yeah. Um, so my last year of college was a lot. It was a lot. Uh, mm-hmm. Just as a whole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was, so I did almost two times the units that I would usually do in yeah, a semester. Yeah, so yeah. if I was doing 16... I was doing 16 units on an average semester. I was doing 28 for my mm-hmm. last two. Yeah. So instead of taking four classes, I was taking seven classes. And um, on top of that, at night from 11 p.m. till 5 a.m., I was working. So 11 p.m. to 5 a.m., California time was basically 10.30 a.m. to yeah, 4 yeah, p.m. Yeah. So I was sleeping like four hours a day on average and just go like going bonkers on five, six cups of coffee a day and just... You know, it was not a very healthy situation, but yeah. I knew that's what I wanted to do, so I just kept on with it. This uh, Admiral, the company that we licensed, there was a change in ownership, and uh, they essentially wanted to renegotiate our contract. They said, "We don't, you know, we don't think this contract is right. We want more money." Blah blah blah, <laughs> and uh, and yeah, yeah, of course. So they were basically because we they already invested a ton of money into it. And they were pretty much trying to strong arm us into saying, okay, we'll pay you more commission. And in the like, that's when the whole talks fell apart and they unilaterally canceled the contract. So this was in my last semester of college. I had three months left to go. I was about to come back and go full ham into it. But that's yeah. when they canceled the contract. So what that left us was with either we could shut the whole thing down and, you know, uh, go back Call home it and a, do something yeah. else. Or we could start again. 
and um, so my parents and my sister came for my grad ceremony and we went on a we went on a grad trip so i went to hawaii of all places i mean i think uh, that's a great option um no, i don't know about other people uh, so we we got a house it was literally on the beach uh, and you know there was a small like seating area and we were just sitting all of us sitting there and talking you know yeah, what do we yeah, want yeah 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 so what's the way forward and we said listen we were building a rented house for this long right like no one no one knew the brand in india anyway mm-hmm. so we were anyway starting from scratch we've learned a lot along the way so might as well start building our own house yeah we won't we won't make the same mistakes that we did earlier we won't go massy we won't go just ham into doing whatever we did yeah let's restart but let's restart in a in a smarter fashion and uh, so that's when we came back uh, started working on this Uh, came up with the brand came up with the name the name is a whole different story which yeah how did the I'll name ke- name into, yeah how did the uh, name come I'll tell deeper in, okay, I'll, okay, I'll okay. the question later okay, okay. but yeah so started the started the brand started all of this um and we were lucky enough to be in the right place at the right time uh the indian football team contract with nike was expiring Yeah how did that and, come uh, about because that was something that, I mean it's not like yeah. okay you know when you're working with an already established company in a sense and then you're getting you know other um other conglomerates and companies to come on it sort of makes sense because you sort of have that name riding on your back right like so you're essentially right. the manufacturer but as a manufacturer you're representing that big company and then if you you know approach right. like ISL players it still makes sense because then for those companies it's like okay there's a big name but then now you sort right. of start a fresh and then this whole indian team jersey thing happens how did right. that come about because that's like going literally from 0 to 100 in like like that okay. so it we, we we i told you we worked with a couple of isl teams with that group and um, they liked what we were doing because we were able to provide a good service we were able to do it at good prices and we had the whole marketing channel set up so that uh, a lot of these a lot of isl uh, clubs haven't really been able to create brands for themselves mm-hmm. you know like Uh, a, a, a football club is a brand, yeah, and, and yeah. that brand has merchandise. That brand has a jersey sales. Like all of those are parts of their revenue. And Indian clubs have, like till date, they're struggling with it because the market is very price sensitive, and there's a lot more in India as compared. Like counterfeiting is a big problem. And so mm-hmm, so yeah. So what we were able to do with Kerala Blasters was phenomenal by Indian standards. In one season. With Kerala, we sold over nine thousand pieces of merchandise at retail value. Yeah, that's insane. And uh, and and that was that had not happened in India before this. So they liked what we were doing. Us as what we were at middle of the brand, and they approached us. Yeah. So we we told them like straight up, we don't have that brand anymore. That's not with us. We do have our own brand. We're the same people with the same organization with the same infrastructure. It's just the the, the name is different. Yeah. The name different, and we have a story to tell. We're an Indian brand with the Indian national team. Yeah. With uh, you know, we have a whole host of ideas that we can bring to the table. So this is our story, and this is what we have to tell. So we're competing against Adidas. Yeah. <laughs> against Puma, <laughs> against uh, Nivea, shit like all of these brands were also bidding for the same thing. We said, okay, this is what we can do. This is what we bring to the table. If you're on board with it, we'd love to have. And. Uh, when the right place at the right time nike's contract was expiring a deal was brought forward that side of it they liked what we had to offer we even like we didn't design the jersey right even before that from anything we we initial design of what we think what would envisage the jersey to be and all of that yeah but then like it's like you didn't just approach them by being like listen we don't really have anything right now but you worked with us so we maybe we can figure something out you were like okay this is what we think of doing and this is all our you know game plan in one concise um you know format that you can check out and then you know you can probably uh, see if you want to go with it so it wasn't i i mean what yeah, i'm sensing is it wasn't just like a shot in the dark completely like obviously you were presented with an opportunity but you were like if i am presented right. with an opportunity i might as well you know present it in the best way possible exactly and we just cuz we knew the 
the impact that we could have as well as the impact that it could have on us yeah as a company would be huge and it has opened a lot of doors for us you know being being in belgium has opened a lot of doors for us so so that so that started rolling um and then for for us we didn't we, we didn't think of us as a garment retailer hmm. so we didn't want to go down the whole route of you know ma again mass producing yeah. yeah 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 everything from t-shirts to yoga pants to whatever you can think of we didn't want to go down that what we wanted to do was make it a little more specific we want to just be catering to teams so we've just been doing that hmm. we so sports wear we only do team wear so we don't just go you know make t-shirts for you to run in or do anything team merchandise and then any associated merchandise along with that so far yeah now street was I was in LA for five, four years. I really like. I was there when the first Yeezy drop happened. Exactly, like that was, was something that I was. That was something that I was going to ask is because LA in itself is such a cultural hub of all of that street stuff, you know. Yeah. So, uh, uh, I what I was going to ask was, I, I mean, it obviously would have influenced you in one way or another, right? Um, it really did. I think I think you see it shining through the design as well, uh, like the design language, the. the whole the whole way we communicate is very much influenced by our influences and and being being there at the time uh, just seeing all of this happen i kind of got into it very organically i had a friend who bought every single pair of ultra boost that came out in 2013 <laughs> he literally like he had every colorway of of the ultra boost with him in in the, in a college dorm and i just saw it and i was like Yeah, that's when uh, Ultra Boosts were like what? as big as any other shoe yeah. that drops now. Like now, yeah. I really don't understand why the, the Ultra Boosts have sort of like just gone down. I guess it's because they've more marketed it towards. Like, just too many have been made. I think also like now it's marketed towards like running and you know like fathers are picking it up. Like my dad has a pair of Ultra Boosts, you know. So it's like uh, it's one of the most comfortable shoes I've oh, ever yeah. owned. No, oh yeah, like no definitely. Hands down. definitely it's one of, it's one of the most comfortable shoes i've ever owned so so anyway from there i kind of picked it up it it kind of got imbibed in some way shape or form i got more into it became a thing that i was constantly on checking blah 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 now and i was still living a broke student's life so i wasn't really yeah. buying much myself uh, but i was still in it like i was still in it in in more ways than one <laughs> my sister uh, went to lcf she did her masters in uh, fashion brand management and uh, fashion entrepreneurship and management so both of us came back around the same time about 6 months apart after signing the indian football team and after like setting up some sort of business for the sports side we just had this whole you know this whole thing in our head that we really want to do something for the street fair side as well because you didn't find anything in india right like yeah there was nothing in that point of time Yeah, you found it through resellers. Uh, there was a few brands, uh, so not one was there. Uh, I think um, a couple of other brands, like I'd heard of Stray or whoever, they were still yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. But, but there was nothing that I really gelled well with, or I thought was you know very representative of what was happening. And and that's when Avni and I we we kind of put our head to it and said, okay, we're going to start, we're going to do this, and we're not like that's why we we sat down and kind of ironed down the whole direction of where we're going. And, and from the start, the idea was pretty much, uh, you know, it'll be a passion project, and if it works, then we'll see how it goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the whole clothing was not; it was made to just spark conversation. It wasn't made for anything else. There was nothing in it for, uh, you know, if you talk about seasonality or trends or any of that, just like yeah, yeah, yeah. Tossed no, nothing there. like that. Yeah, it was just what was relevant to us at the time. and relevant to all of our target audience that we thought was there at the time which was what are the conversation that we were having what were we planning in our lives what was important to us um and then so our first like our first drop with that was called the global travel because uh, i think before 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 this whole pandemic traveling had become such an essential activity for anyone who could afford to do it yeah that people weren't really thinking of it as you know a luxury Oh definitely you know, like, it moved from I want to travel it moved from uh, being a very you know 
रेयर थिंग टू डू एज टू देन बींग जस्ट सो कम्प्लीटली नॉर्मल टू बी गोइंग आउट एंड विजिटिंग यू नो डिफरेंट पार्ट्स ऑफ द वर्ल्ड एट लीस्ट वंस और ट्वाइस अयर लाइक एट लाइक and even even if you could afford to go abroad you would just go in india yeah. but you there were people traveling like left right and center yeah 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 and, and that is what we kind of wanted to focus on that you know people want to travel but the world is getting smaller for them and yet yet like there are all of these borders that are coming you yeah. know cuz the whole integration issues that are that were happening across the globe hmm whether it was you know brexit or whether it was trump whether it was um even india becoming sort of you know guarded against yeah, any sort of yeah definitely definitely yeah so we just wanted to put that out and have like have a conversation around that through clothing that's how this whole thing started we launched and within like two days we had our first order and we just like Yeah, their first what? order is always like what? Yeah, I, I can't. I, I'm not going to reveal the name on like no. online, but I remember it. Like I know yeah, yeah. the exact name of the person and what they ordered in what size. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, because that that first order was just 300, 400 followers at the time. We hadn't put out much content. We just started revealing our you know first drop, and that like that was it. It just it just somehow went from there, and then. a lot of people in the community started to get to know about our brand without us doing it like i wasn't part of any of the whatsapp groups i'm a part of today at the time i was we were just putting it out on instagram for people to see yeah and then it just organically got picked up by a lot more people a lot of people started talking about it and and then it organically grew from there to you know where we are today yeah so um i mean coming back to the question uh where did the name come from um so i told you we had a disastrous uh, like with a previous brand we had a disastrous run in with uh, actor so we knew for a fact that that contract was going to get cancelled one way or the other or another right maybe not now maybe a year from yeah, now maybe later uh but it had to happen at some point because there was no like there was no cohesiveness in what was going on so we uh, we had already started thinking of names of of what we would call our own brand and we had this excel which had over like 250 names on it <laughs> uh and you know like uh, we were just uh, the, the problem with registering a trademark in this class like apparel and footwear is that everything you could possibly think of is, is taken. already taken yeah so it's called class 25 of the trademark uh, registry thing that you could think of is taken so we We used to compile a list of names every week, send them to our legal, like whoever was heading it, and then they would Check they would put it through the trademark database. Yeah, and every time we just used to get no, yeah. no, yeah. no, not possible, no, not possible. Yeah, because the problem is so, even if yeah. somebody is like not actively working, or even if they're defunct, as long as they have the name trademarked or copyright, they, they still it, yeah. they still own the copyrights to that. So it's like. Exactly, oh. and and you you want to start something today, and then be a trademark issue sometime later, yep. right? Yeah, like like that's just not smart. So so we we're thinking of everything in the fucking English language, in the Hindi, like, like anything and everything you can think of, right? We went from so we we're thinking of very sportswear brand style name. So we thought of Agile as a name, spelled with a Y, A G Y L E, yeah, or like yeah. a lot of. lot of weird stuff but there was always something that would clash with it now we were on so we had a meeting with this with with the admiral guys in malaysia we were on the flight back from it right uh and in this meeting they cancelled like they were like fuck you guys mm. so we're cancelling this on uh on the flight back again abhi and i are sitting and thinking what what you know what next and uh, We like name 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 fucking like, let's let's finalize the name it's hype bang so avni's boarding card uh, she was scribbling on it like she was writing on the back of it and then she turned it around and our flight number was 656 <laughs> so that was like the flight number was 656 uh, we we kind of got excited by it a little bit it wasn't our first choice no way we were just like 656 mm. maybe uh, but The good part was it didn't mean anything, and we could make it mean whatever we wanted. Open to interpretation, basically. So, 
exactly uh, it was it was something that could be molded into whatever you want to mold it into and uh, so we got off this plane checked with our lawyers they said this will work we said fucking go ahead with it you know <laughs> like fucking do it let's 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 get on with it so who designed the logo because you could have had a uh, many iterations of you know 656 six. it could have yeah. just been 656 in letters it could have been you know 65 in letters and then 6 in uh, you know uh, alphabets but you decided that 5 to be in the middle and you know 6 and you know that being a right. uh, repetitive thing where did that I idea come was, from so, so so the way the way we were uh, the way we were trying like the way it's stylized which is six 5 and then six yeah, yeah. that was something that we avni and i were sitting on and saying because we didn't want it to just be numbers hmm. and we didn't want the whole thing to be uh, letters letters either yeah. so so we, that the styling we did but the logo actual logo design was done by uh, one of our business partners brothers he works in canada uh, at a at a big design agency okay and we were looking for a logo designer so we we were asking whoever we could and then he said okay fine i'll i'll, I'll ask him to take care of it so we told him the whole story right uh, and and that so he is the one who came up with the whole logo and if you see it the the, the symbol is actually the tally symbol is for five yeah uh, yeah and, yeah, and yeah, also yeah. if you cover either half of the logo you will see like the top half is like a bird and the bottom half is like a mountain so it's 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 a symbol of a bird flying over a mountain in some sense which is symbolic of how we were on a flight when we thought it <laughs> that's nice i mean that's uh, even to find some because i think a logo is really important in whatever you're doing like be it a, be it a band be it any you know company be it any anything that you're doing um, a logo essentially is a very quick short fire way of telling your entire story and uh, right. the fact that i mean obviously you know hiring a graphic designer that knows how to do their stuff um really helps because you can even if you don't have a specific idea you can give them a gist and then because you're not you know a master yeah. at what they do they can just come up with something and you you'll be you know shocked uh, at what they were able to come up with and you know they'll be like oh you know i added this there i added that then you're like dude uh, wow um and even i had thought of it right exactly yeah, yeah that's that's what that's what happened for us as well because we didn't want to we didn't want to do a shoddy job of it because we knew this is something that we would have to stick with for, for the like, foreseeable future right and uh, so we didn't want to just get anyone to just be like acha ek logo bana de because like that's too generic and, and i think that's the problem with like most people most people just go like uh it's just an attitude towards like the business side of things as well where they like go okay you know what at this point of time i need to start so if i start with putting in the least amount of money or having the least amount of debt uh then you know i can make more but then right. you know you that can just result in you creating stuff that's not really that great because if you want to find like actually you know do something that makes an impact you do have to spend some basic amount of money into it like no business operates in a way where you can just start off with nothing and then make a lot of money um it's a it's a catch 22 situation right it's like it's like the circle that you're in would the chicken come first or the egg came first right like it's you have to you, ca- you just have to balance it out yeah. what's important you have to really spend your money on that can wait you can wait on yeah exactly so, a logo an identity your brand language is something that you can't wait on if you're starting a brand Precisely. if you're starting a manufacturing unit you can wait on it no one can yeah 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 you know like the as if i i think my dad's company got a logo maybe 3 years ago otherwise they just used to write their name in text yeah that was it because it doesn't matter because uh, it's like the job is completely different exactly it's not a brand it's not an outward image as long as you get the job done as long as you're doing uh, the manufacturing right that's that's all that matters yeah uh, and and your name builds up from that you don't need a uh, branding because you're not a customer facing company or a business to business yeah company. yeah um but when you when you're starting something that's b to c everything is noticed your website the way it's the way it's structured the your customer experience on a website or your page or any sort of con- like conversation that you have with them whether that's through an email or whether that's through a call everything has to give them 
a sense of who you are as a company and and that's super important that's something that um, you know i have actually learned a lot from my sister on okay cuz as as someone who's had a, a very business first mindset there are mm-hmm. times where i've just said fuck it let's at least get it on with mm-hmm. and, and you know she's always drilled it in my head that this is your experience to the customer mm-hmm. uh, you can't you can't you can't fuck with it you can't fake it yeah it has to be real, it has, it has to, be to be genuine authentic. and it has to be good it has to be good so so that's something that i've learned a lot from in not just my sister but everyone in our design team as well because they they've always told me customer first and i've said you know i've kind of gotten that mindset from them so it's a it's a lot it's it's a lot of both uh, having a mix of what's important and what's not what can wait and what cannot yeah and then balancing it out it's is essentially prioritizing it in a way in which you want to present it yeah. um coming to that cuz i mean it's easier said than done to just be like okay you know what i have a brand and i put it up on instagram um mm-hmm. you obviously need to have something that visually sets you apart from everybody else so what were the mm-hmm. kind of influences you were taking was it just like you know what this is the basic idea i have and let's just get someone to do it or was it a conscious decision of this is how i want to present it um because that obviously had an effect on how the brand became more than just Perceived. an idea right yeah. right um so it's when we started we'd actually hired a pr company uh, you know like every That's stupid so person who, like no it, it was smart and stupid i mean uh, i don't know like it was, in my experience it was uh, at least like hiring somebody who does pr is great cuz they can essentially you know put your mind towards well this is a business you're starting so you probably need to think about it as a business uh which right, is, no, it was yeah. a, it was a good decision because it we we kind of learned a lot it was an expensive one though uh, oh so, definitely <laughs> yeah it is a it was an expensive decision and we thought it was the right decision at the time and i still think i still think we learned a lot from that you know 5 or 6 months that we spent with that company uh the good part was that we um we started to grow outgrow them very quickly okay in the sense that we wanted things to be at a certain pace at all times you know we wanted our create our visuals to be there like if i thought of something today i want to put it out tomorrow so we were like fast pace that way and uh, they weren't able to match up with it so we kind of had to take a step back and hire our own visual hmm. people our own yeah. designers because of that Uh, as far as uh, the visual communication side of it was concerned my sister always had a very clear idea of what she wanted to do um i was very much so, like you know i was 100% behind her because i knew if she got it right the way she imagined it it would be it would work yeah yeah and um, so our first one we actually did the shoot ourselves uh, in fact we still do all of our shoots ourselves if you go on our website you will find that the face cut off model is pretty much me always <laughs> i'm no <laughs> you know like, like you can see my watch in some shots and yeah, yeah but um, so we we pretty much do all our all our shoots and everything ourselves in the house uh, so we we wanted the whole direction to be pretty much what we thought it would always be so we did that for the first job for the second job we didn't want that company to do it so i we were looking for freelancers online and then we came across Dhruv who currently heads our design side uh, for visual communication and uh, his his handle was just incredible like the way he thought of things was incredible to us so he was all about like putting nostalgia and retro wave and everything future futuristic in one frame and we kind of liked the idea of that we kind of liked the direction where it came from so we we kind of called him in for an interview and he said okay fine let's start with a freelance project because he would still like he still had an internship going on for his college graduation okay at at the firm so he said okay fine let's start with a freelance uh, gig and see what happens so he did the freelance gig for the second drop and then he joined full time um and so he now is pretty much he's the creative engine behind the visual communication side of it yeah uh, in terms of coming up with the direction that's avni and him together and um we have a couple of other people on the team who help in the execution because there's more to it now like 656 is not the only thing that we're doing now yeah precisely we essentially tried to the entire process of 
conceptualizing a campaign and bringing it live all of it in house yeah didn't want to just do it for our own brand we also wanted to do it for the store that we were coming up with because yeah. that was going to be a bunch of other brands and creators and what not so we um we essentially a small team of people uh to do exactly that so we have a videographer in house we have a we have a co- content director in house and then we have a couple of graphic designers who who you know with all the content that goes up on any of our handles there's there's like i in my opinion that's the only way for brands to move forward at the pace that they want to move forward on definitely i uh, think i think if, a lot if, of issues happen because and a lot of time gets spent because you can't really get on the same uh, you know uh, mind frame or you can't get on the same you know just idea of what someone else is doing and most of it is just you know well i wanted it like this and now can we have this change can we have that change and it's just a long process where you're editing and editing and editing you know again and again but if you have somebody who's actively working with you and they see that they themselves as designers or they themselves as what they're doing have something to add on to it you can you know sit down at a uh, at an at an equal level and discuss even though it is your brand uh, they would still feel that they have some important input to you know put into it so then you can sort of sit together and mind map the whole you process like, together you have, you have to be able to trust them yeah you have to also be able to trust them after a point of time like if if i'm working with an agency or the girl who's been assigned to me is working on six other clients at the same time uh i know for a fact that she does not is not attached to the idea of our brand yeah true if if there's one person who's full time in the organization who understands the idea that we have who understands the vision that we're working on and agrees and aligns to that vision then you're able to trust them yeah so precisely a lot of the visions that you see going up i don't even look at them until yeah 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 doing but the, the team is like you know, the visuals team will take care of it and they put it up and i see it only after it's up Yeah, like you know that you can trust them enough to be like I don't even need to worry about that aspect. So I can then, as a person who has to right. you know do specific tasks, can then focus on what I have to do and just leave the rest of it to you know the other exactly. people who are doing that job. Um, which brings us exactly. to obviously what you had mentioned was uh the whole FTC concept that you're coming up with. Um, and I don't right. I mean you've been slowly introducing it online, but I don't think. people really have right. a clear idea of what it is i mean we've obviously talked about what it is uh, and we've talked at length about what it is um, i've even come to right. your uh, you know place that is eventually supposed to be the store and i've checked it out and i honestly think it's probably one of the coolest things um, that anyone in india has tried to do for a very long time it's it's something that again we discussed it's something that i saw myself in london in various you know mm-hmm. spheres be it not just music i saw it in music i saw it in fashion i saw it even in the uh, computing computer science field you know where you would have these like random warehouses where you just have a collection of coders and gamers and uh, people who are creating new stuff with 3d printers and stuff like that all just sitting in one area making whatever they want and you know they collaborate with each other so uh, i i've been in those environments and i've seen what that can actually do even if it's not you know for somebody who actively wants to build a brand but someone who just really needs to just find people that are interested in the same thing they are inter- interested in because it's not easy to i mean you can have a lot of friends but it's not easy to find people who are interested in the exact same thing you are interested in so i guess that was the main idea that you had also thought of when you were coming up with the whole for the culture thing right right uh for so just again that's that's a story and a half as well right like there's this of the idea came from mere paas main kapde bechta hu main joote bhi bech sakta hu mujhe apni dukaan kholni hai let's put the two of them together Haan. that's why that's literally the base of the idea when when you actually start getting down to it and when you start saying when you start actually putting your heart in space to be that's when the reality of it gets mm-hmm. so it started as let's let's create a store for ourselves 
to make it viable let's also get all these other brands their products in it now uh, this accessories and stuff yeah. and make it a reality but when we got into it we like that's fucking boring like that's there's nothing to it it's it's pretty much it's soulless won't be my own brand space it won't be a multi brand store it'll just be a somewhere in the middle kind of a thing yeah see how we trying to do here when we delve deeper into it we realized that what we really wanted to do was to actually create a space which could get our community together hmm. because there's not too many spaces is in my opinion would actually do that uh, i mean i don't think, think there's there any i mean there's stores but there's no like um you know specific spaces where you can go and you know if i go to this space i'm going to get x like exactly yeah and and i didn't want to just have a store a retail space which people would come to just to make a transaction because that is right people are making transactions online left right and center yeah make people are avoiding a reason to step out of their house and they do so is if it's a necessity yeah so going forward if if anyone wants to open a retail store it has to have an experience to a transaction and yeah, that's like, what we want to get to so, it, it needs to be inviting enough that somebody would come out not just for you know the act of purchasing but also just enjoying that in, entire process exactly when we session the idea out we realized that it could be a lot more than just a couple of other brands that's in true sense if we were able to make it that so the idea was to essentially get the individuals get created or who might be interested experience what these brands are trying to say what individuals are trying to say and what this community stands for as a whole yeah that was the idea and that included everything from you know uh, sneakers to uh, uh, clothing skating to, to music to hip hop like anything and everything <laughs> that that made this entire subculture what it was included in that yeah um so there are, so like us we're an indian brand we don't have any retail spaces to be in there are 10 other indian brands who are facing the exact same problem hmm so we started reaching out to all of them uh, by this time we were already friends with a lot of them so we started reaching out saying in this would you be interested and everyone's answer was like when is it open Yeah because they are constantly Where facing the issue of well we don't have any retail space so if someone comes exactly. and says well i'm creating a retail space it would be stupid to say no like so so for them they were like you know whenever it's opening we're in yeah. let us know what we need to do so so that gave us a lot of confidence in addition to that we also wanted to be uh, a bridge for international brands to come into india you know if if you're a if you're a look like okay if you're gucci you have ample ways to come into india but if you're a low key brand uh you know if if you're a low key brand that's very popular where they are you can't really pick up your bags and come to india and start yeah, a store precisely so what are the ways of a brand from outside india to enter in there are yeah limits. there's none um, and and so we uh, wanted to be that bridge where if you want to bring up if, if a brand is popular in india or if we think a brand could work in india we kind of wanted to be the bridge to bring them in so we reached out to i must have sent over 100 150 emails you know anybody and i reached out to everyone from fight <laughs> to uh, this is like i i probably have a list so I'll, i i can yeah. read that list out to you but they start to hundreds of people right and off of a pitch deck we are able to get two brands on board so we got pleasures officially on board uh, pleasures is going to be coming yeah. to india through uh, through our store and uh, we got chinatown market and then an iwe brand called akila which is again based out of yeah, yeah so So off of a pitch deck, we're able to get all of these brands to officially sign on. 
of the brands were willing to come through pieces of the retail space that they were building. So they were like, once you built it, send us pictures of it. We'll have to gauge it and then we'll decide. Mm-hmm. That in a nutshell was the idea. We were wanting to give each brand a small space that they could make their own inside of the store. So it wasn't just racks on a seat, like mm-hmm. racks and racks and racks of clothing or whatever. It was more, okay, that's that brand space. Uh, okay. So they, they they can actually communicate their own experience through that space and then just make it in whichever way they would want to, essentially. Uh, additionally, on the sneaker side, all the all the brands that were in India, we were able to get on board. So Nike, Adidas, Reebok, these guys were happy to sign on. They they were very excited about the point as well. And I guess, and I guess for these brands as well that I mean are quite popular, they still in India don't have a space where, like, I can't really go into a Nike store and if I want to just look at like Jordans, there's no way I'm going to have to. I'm going to have a Nike shop like that because if there's a Nike no, shop, no. Nike is going to have all of their products, right? So right. based so on Nike in India. Nike in India in India is based on a licensee model, so they are basically like Nike doesn't have their own stores. They have licensed out mm. their their name for stores. These open and run their stores. Most most of the brands are working on this model where anyone can open their stores. Of course, not anyone, but people who they yeah. trust can yeah. open their stores based on certain experience. Kind of gets diluted a little bit. That. Oh so yeah, that's definitely. Why that's why they're so like um, when its biggest ever store, the second biggest ever store in Bangalore or mm. on Indra, in Indra Nagar. Yeah. Um, and that's a fully experiential immersive store. Five original store which are which are owned by them, which are run by them. Yeah. And that's those are giving the Adidas experience. Exactly. In the store. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So there are so brands are becoming cognizant of this. There's a like, of course, the value segment is already being taken care of through their franchise stores. That's where that's where the consumers care for like value for money products. Yeah. But there's a whole other segment, value for money, as much as they care about what the story of the product is. Yeah, true. Um, and and for that you need to give them an experience. For that, a, a basic retail store doesn't cut it. Yeah. No, that's why all of these brands are so supportive of stores like ours or. Super cakes or veg non veg because they understand the kind of experience. Yeah, because it's like if I walk into a store that's just a normal store, I might just browse around, and if I find like there's too many things distracting me, I'm just gonna leave. But if I go into a store and if I find that there is a platform where I'm looking for something, and I go and I get that plus, you know, this whole atmosphere. Um, that gives me that experience. Even if I'm not looking to buy something, I might just be tempted to get something just because of the way you know the shop is built, or just because of the way the whole environment of the shop is. Like I think, like a great example of that it, is it's an experience, right? Like you, you want you want you want to take a, a, a memento from that experience. So yeah. you want something to represent that experience for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and we do that when we go abroad, right? A lot. You might not buy the. Is take something small just just because we want to remember that experience. Oh yeah, definitely. Like uh, the end store in London is like I just saw it accidentally and I went in and I enjoyed the store so much. I was like, "Fuck this! I need to pick up something." Just because I was like, <laughs> "This store is made so well, so it's made in a way where just as you see it, so they've got all glass." Well, uh, on their edges, right. right? So there's no uh, bricks or anything like that. It's just glass. So even when you're walking from the outside, you can just see like a wall of sneakers. And uh, and if you're somebody who's obviously like interested in sneakers, you're like, what is that? And then you walk in, and then it's just like, oh, you just saw this one part you could see from the window. Now there's everything else inside. Right. And then everything else inside is curated so well. You're like. And then they have, you know, de- de- dedicated people for every other section of the store. Like, there's not just like clothing. There's on one end you have sneakers. Then on another corner of the room you had have high end sneakers. 
you have clothes then you have you know toys um you have a section for books so it's like this whole immersive experience and then once you're in it you're like okay this is getting really hard for me to like resist myself to pick up just a simple thing and that's right. what you end up doing like you end up buying something and you don't feel bad about it when you walk out of the store you're like okay that was great like i want to do this again right it's it's worth the experience it's and 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 then of course the creation matters right like what kind of product is there product the quality of the brands the kind of service that you're able to provide and most good stores are stores that you don't feel bad about spending a lot of time in. yeah if you were traveling and you had a limited amount of time and you would be like okay i have 6 hours to be able to be here if i went into a good store and spent 3 hours i won't feel bad that i missed out on 5 hours this store exactly yeah uh, so for us with with the amount of space that we had we have two floors for retail but then a floor which is just meant to be a space that you can come in uh, whether or not like you know whether or not you're coming in there to buy whether you're just coming in there to sit on your laptop maybe have a meeting if it's near to you maybe call another person from the community and come here and chill out if if it's if you're camping out for a drop or if you want to get like for waiting in line there's a space where you can sit relax chill out like all of those things really matter to people oh yeah so 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 that's what we want to build it as and the fact that people want something to drink something to eat so we we brought a coffee partner on board sleepy owl which is my my favorite coffee shout to the founder and i think we're one of the top 20 10 15 customers because we just consume <laughs> their coffee that's, uh, that's all we drink so 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 we uh, i told them like this is something we're doing and they were very pumped about it as well this was obviously before before yeah. people be stepping out of the house for 6 months uh, yeah. <laughs> but all of this was <laughs> all of this was before that um, so now all of these grand plans and today we have an empty building and uh, yeah you just got to so, wait it out um so nothing lasts forever you just have to wait it out i guess like that's like but i i mean it's not that again it's not that you're the only person who's waiting out everybody's waiting out so yeah, yeah it's like so a... i i i think this 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 pandemic is an opportunity if you look at it that way yeah. uh, you know it it can be an opportunity for personal growth it can be an opportunity for uh understanding things that you were, don't understand as much like if if you if 50 days ago you were less informed about the political environment of the world and if you put your mind to it 50 days ago that i'm going to learn more about the political environment of the world as much as i can you'd be a lot wiser oh right? yeah definitely it's it's just about putting like using the time that you have as as best as you possibly can yeah or, or like even if like i mean i don't think there's any one way in which you're supposed to do it even if you're taking time off just to focus on yourself that's also fine because before as this it was you, like as long as it works for you yeah like because because before this it was just like doing one thing after another after another it was all like a task based thing where okay i've done this right. now i need to do this now i need to do that and like most people work 9 to 5s and it's grueling to say the least so right the fact that now you have this situation where you can just relax and not care about those things and sort of be more I I would say like be more human in a way because I think we drifted away from really being human for a, like quite a while like it's sort of like yeah. coming back to the basic essentials of you know existing in your own you know skin in in a way um, right. I think you I think it's also about facing yourself yeah you know because like when you are when you are working right when you are when you are piling things on your to do list like there's no there's nothing you know nothing else you don't really come to terms with yourself yeah like you just keep putting that back and and when when everything comes to a stop right like when when nothing is functioning when there's no business to take care of nothing else to do nowhere to go you can't run from it you can't exactly. hide from it exactly yeah you, like you you are where you are and yeah. you have to face it yeah you have to face yourself in that mirror i think it opens a lot of possibilities yeah 
I mean, uh, I'm still surprised because I thought like with all of this stuff happening, uh, at least in the whole streetwear thing, I won't really see that much happening. But there's so much happening. Sales are not stopping. Drops are happening as they are. People are getting what they want. So it's not yep. like people are sleeping. Um, and I think it's a great like chance for people to, if they ha- ever had an idea they wanted to flush out, if they ever had an idea they wanted to work on and try but were not able to do because of, you know, all of the rest of, you know, worldly things, they probably can finally have that time to do that. 100%. Be- yeah. I, th- on, I, think, I think fashion though will, will kind of have to uh, whole process in, in, mm. this whole, in this whole thing. Uh, I think this, so being a manufacturer for fashion brands, right? I can tell you, like, we're getting, we're getting screwed 100%. Right? Yeah. 80% of our orders are cancelled. Like all, like all of that, that's a separate story. But but the retailers themselves are facing a crisis which they would not have dreamed of. Oh yeah, right? definitely. What what this pandemic has done is kind of made us realize how unsustainably we've been approaching the whole thing. Precisely. Yeah. And personally, if you ask my opinion, nothing will change. But mm-hmm. I hope that there is a, you know, there is at least a rethinking of the priorities that you have as a company. So that's like I'm hoping that there might be some companies that might realize business model. Like in fact, there's something we've been thinking. You know, like we have mm. a, we have some stuff. Well, we have some leftover unsold inventory and we're thinking that just you know that is a waste like that is something that is a waste that could be avoided yeah we're able to sell it discounted so on and so forth but that's a waste that could have been avoided so how can we get to a point where we don't make as much as is required and that's that you know as as much as people who wanted in that visit yeah Considering if we can go on a pre-order model, if we can go on something along the line of that, but um, concrete so far, we're still we're still wondering how to do it. I think a pre-order thing is definitely that's. I mean, I'm used to it because that's sort of the only way like bands work on. Because uh, the way in which a band approaches like merchandise right. is. We can't really, you know, just go out and make a thousand t-shirts because we know for a fact nobody's going to buy a thousand t-shirts, right? Um, mm-hmm. But we know that, you know, we can probably get a situation where we can make one specific design and then make probably like 20 of them and right. put them out like two, three months in advance where we know that, you know, it might catch enough traction to sell 20 units. Um, mm-hmm. But then obviously it's an issue because our main thing is not that. Our main thing is the music. So that the the merchandise and everything else is sort of something that supports the music whereas for you the merchandise or what you present is the main thing Um, is everything so it's definitely something that a lot of you know brands will have to think about and i think even if uh, things go back to normal like especially people in our generation are going to rethink i really think that people in our generation are going to rethink how they go about you know their business practices in general i mean we in right. itself we're the largest consumers of the whole online world anyhow uh, right 100%. so uh, that is also something that's definitely going to change because now it's going to be a real real problem like just in going out so i think a lot of brands will have to sort of move away from retail and actually start online inventories like they have never done before um i mean that's at least that's at least what i feel um because if you're looking at you know statistically their main their 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 chunk of consumers um Mm -hmm. their chunk of consumers are probably not going to go out in the same way that we used to before um right uh so that's obviously something worth uh considering about um and that's what i I think think about as well quite a lot um Mm -hmm. there's there's so many sides to this story like when you look at it from a if you were a conglomerate uh when you look at it from their perspective there's they are responsible for all of these people that they've hired yeah that they're responsible for all of their employees their families their the factories that they have contracts with and so on and so forth i you can't fault a company trying to take care of it. yeah that's, definitely that's yeah 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 talent. Uh, at the same time, you also have to think of the bigger picture. If I was making 500 million pairs of shoes a year, super brands are doing. Yeah. 
my, the, the amount of resources that I'm consuming from this planet exactly. is very unsustainable. Exactly. So, so it's it's this situation where it's profit versus the greater good. Hmm. Companies always invariably will choose profit. Yeah. Because because you know you don't have like you can't think beyond a certain time because you don't think it will matter by that time. So, whole thing. I think we have realized that we consume way too much. Yeah, definitely. And and, and definitely. we we put way too much emphasis on the kind of things that we're buying at all times. Yeah. So it's kind of given a lot of people some time to rethink. Like my sister, definitely. Uh, even I, like I haven't bought a pair of shoes in the last three months. I don't plan on buying a new one anytime soon, just because I know that I have enough right now. And if I really, really want something, I'll get it whenever I want it. Really, like yeah. I'll get it when when it's required. Right now, I don't need it. You can see some all, most of my shoes are right here. You can see one yeah, pair. Yeah. yeah. Um, I I know that I don't need a new pair of shoes right now, and so I'm I'm holding back. If also takes this this leap and holds on to it, then maybe we'll see a longer chain a long. but it's all it's all speculation yes yeah, it's completely speculation at this point of time i mean the moment things go back normal the moment people can start walking and talking again uh brands will go back to the same marketing practices that they had i think they, i think it it'll, it'll it'll be the same to a very large extent because uh a lot of people just want that norm what they consider as normalcy to come back um yeah And yeah, yeah hopefully that, it becomes better. I actually better, wrote an know. article about this. I I I wrote I wrote an article about how nothing is going to change, and there's there's precedence for it, right? Like oh, the, definitely. The two thousand eight financial crisis. For oh example. yeah. You thought that was the that was the day that the world will be altered forever. Five years later, we were back to the same. Back position. to the same position. Yeah, definitely. Today we're back to the same position where consumption is through the roof. Brands are making more, but consumers are buying more. Almost everyone has more clothes than they would need in a lifetime, more shoes than they would need in a lifetime, and the business of reselling and all of that has just aided that. Yeah. As well. Where do you draw the line? I am not the model authority on it. Bas- basically, yeah. Like we can obvi- only obviously have opinions, but I think yeah, even even my creating a is also, my opinion is also the fact that if someone running a business and you are helping people get make you know make their life better, then who am I to fault that? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's a very uh, like <laughs> I don't want to hypocrite here and say hypocrite here and say people should consume less and do less and blah blah blah. Because I'm like to be honest, we're not. We're yeah. really not. I I just want to be in a position to do more good than harm. Yeah. Good. Yeah, but like your I, I your 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 model is also not you know obviously as you said on the onset you don't want to do the whole mass thing so you're completely fine with x amount of people having your stuff as compared right. to everybody. and i think that's manageable not just because of you know your process but also because i don't think everybody is going to wear the kind of stuff that you specifically focus on because it's not your usual everyday stuff it's very specifically made towards a uh, a vision that you have that again might not really match with everyone else out there but then obviously there are brands that do that whole mass thing so it's a big you know question because india is obviously being looked at as the next big market for streetwear and sneakers and everything like that i mean if people think that you know this market right. has reached a a a, a considerable uh, level no like it's going to be way way more right. than it is now and, and that's not my opinion yeah. that's something uh, you know uh, uh, people in the international trade organization and you know big companies have said when they've 
looked at India recently and the recent rise in streetwear and sneaker culture, they're saying, well, yeah, sneaker culture and all of that has existed in the West. But now, like anything else, it is being introduced to a market that is humongously big. Like, we're a lot of people. And even if, say, 10 to 15% of the entire population the the has the ability to buy, uh, it's still Brands so many people. Great job, right? Yeah, definitely. Like, it has become a lot more than, like, I guess in the early 70s and 80s, brands really, you know, pushed the whole envelope by creating, you know, the best advertisements they could and the best posters that they could. And I feel for a very long time that sort of died. Mm -hmm. Um, and it hit like a stagnation point where you could only see something if you were close to it and you didn't really see it out and about anywhere else. And I think that is going back now to that old style of putting it forward essentially because of Instagram and social media, because that's where sort of a large chunk of the population gets, you know, their content and material from and the move back to visual medium. I think that is also great. And then obviously, you know, it helps out people who are involved in the industry as well. Um, so what's what, what what do you see next for your brand? Because um, I'm sure you uh, must have cooked up stuff in this period. Well, there, there was a lot. Like there, uh, Even before this period, there was a lot that was going on. Uh, in fact, our, we, we planned and designed our entire next drop uh, and it was going to be around censorship, the idea of censorship and how, how it's affected um, how news or lack of it or the falsifying of news <laughs> and and you know everything that and it's a global phenomenon it's not oh, yeah. just here yeah, yeah, yeah it's a global phenomenon that's affecting a lot of people in a lot of ways and um, we just wanted to talk about that have a conversation and kickstart that so that that was what we were working on before this whole thing hit um and and b- because of this whole thing this the need for having conversation about this became even, even more Even more important, yeah. Because, uh, like, in, in today's day and world, false news can literally mean life or death. Oh, yeah. Uh, for, for certain people. So, so that was what we were working on. Then we did the whole 656XU thing, which worked really well. Uh, we got 100 entries, which was phenomenal. Yeah, like, that was, was insane. insane. That was quite insane. And that was completely organic. So that was, you know, that was really great. Uh, for FTC, because the physical store is pretty much on hold, uh, you've seen the digital platform. Yeah, we're we're working on getting that digital platform out and trying to build stories around it. So we do. Uh, I think there's a serious lack of publications in India. Uh, oh yeah, there's 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 no public like publications for this kind of culture don't really exist. Not yeah. in the real sense. Um, you can't really rely on a Vogue or Grazia for this kind of stuff. Definitely. So, so we're trying to build that up from an Indian perspective and an online kind of a, a a place where you can get information about what's happening both in both in India as well as across the world. So that's what that's what we've been working towards slowly. There's there's a website which is almost ready, uh, should be live any time now. Having an e-commerce website as well as well as the whole you know, uh, the whole media website. And um, we're planning to do a few shop drops in the coming, like, couple of weeks. Nice. With the brand that were originally supposed to come in. Um, and and maybe a couple of the local brands as well, which we're working with. So we'll, you'll see a lot more content going up, very specific targeted content. We've done a lot of interviews with individuals, with artists, with brand owners. And, and there's a lot in the pipeline, which we can't wait to put out. So that's that's the that's the next that's like that's what's next for us. At the same time, we're hoping things, um, you know, at least come to a point where we we kind of have a clear direction. Okay, this is how things are going to be. Because mm-hmm. right now we don't. Right mm-hmm. now, I don't know. I don't know if again tomorrow they're going to stop manufacturing because it's yeah. spreading too much or yeah. you know. So we're hoping to come to a point where at least there's a clarity in terms of direction. And and that will really help us to plan better. Yeah. But otherwise, we're just putting arrows in the dark. Oh, down. definitely, yeah. And uh, we're just, you know, we keep counting days. <laughs> I think we're going to be 60 days uh, in, uh, like for me, I've been quarantined from the 18th of March. Same, yeah, 18th of March. So, yeah. so it's going to be 60 days in three days. 
Yeah, like that's, that's wild. That's a wild. Yeah. That's a it's wild. Two months, two months of just being home, kind of grounded yeah. in in more ways than one. And uh, and so so I think uh, it's it's important for our mental health as well to kind of know what the direction is, like you know what the like what yeah. is right, what is wrong, what is safe, what isn't. I feel guilty when I go out because you know I'm scared that I'll bring something back in and mm-hmm. then I live in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm going out for like feeding dogs, so it's not even like I'm going out to meet people. Yeah, I'm actually yeah. going out for things that I want. I I went out to take this one to the vet today, like all of, all all of this. Yeah. So once there is some sort of clarity, I think that will allow all of us to kind of be to yeah. know what to expect. um and and then take things forward because at the end day um one thing that this has taught us is that we need people oh yeah like we fucking yeah. can't live without them yeah. as much as you know you can be an introvert you can be an extrovert that's, oh yeah that's that doesn't irrelevant. matter like human contact is Im- so important right it's it does it doesn't have to be 60 friends at a party yeah well, yeah but those two people are also very oh important. yeah so that's i think that's for sure that no matter how many pairs of shoes i i can buy i can't really buy a person people, uh, to, yeah and it's very important to to kind of cherish those things as well yeah and, you know buying a great pair of shoes yeah definitely i so, think that's a that's a wonderful way to sort of end this great conversation that we've had so where can people find you um if they want to find you if you don't if they don't know about you if it, if they get to know about you from this website so you can search for 656 on google it will come to our website on instagram my handles my name so it's a m b a r a n e j a uh you can find the sportswear site on my handle so it's 656 sport 656 street and then ftc is the complicated one so the website is actually going to be called F- FTC, FTC. Uh, don't ask why. Uh, it's just, a, it's just, it's just a thing. Is the same. So the FTC underscore FTC underscore. FTC. You can find us uh, on Instagram, on Facebook. Uh, I don't know if any of you use Facebook anymore because I definitely don't. I sadly But, still have to. <laughs> why? So I just have to like because of the music and just. It's horrible, <laughs> but there's no other option. Like, um, uh, honestly, I I th- I think I'm gonna make a TikTok account now. <laughs> given, <laughs> I've been thinking of that too. <laughs> It's uh, doom the amount of content that there's 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 on there. It's just too much. I so can't much imagine. So uh, much but but yeah, definitely. I think it's it's. it's good to be updated with what is trending in terms of communication cuz i'm your next customer and for people who are in the business of selling whatever they're selling you need to find that customer exactly yep so there nothing is beneath you if it leads to sales oh that's, definitely that's yeah. oh yeah 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 like you need to get beyond that whole concept of oh this is beneath me or this is not what i do Yeah, I, I, I honestly, I didn't like putting myself out on on social media. Uh, I was very low key before, but I realized that it's important. Uh, and this is something I realized myself. Like, I don't just follow the brands that I like. I follow the founders. People of that behind brand. it, yeah. Yeah, I follow the founders of those brands. I follow the people who work there, just because I am interested in what they're doing. Yeah, becomes important to me. So, uh, it it made me realize that people would. If if I want people to connect with what we do, connect. They need me. to connect with you. Yeah, precisely. Exactly. Yeah. So so that's that it's important. It really is. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, thank you. Thank you so much, Yatin. Thanks for having me. I hope I didn't bore you and everyone. No, no, not at all. Uh, I think. I think this is a lot of valuable information that a lot of people can, you know, read and use because I know there's a lot of people especially in this lockdown I've been seeing so many people who have now, you know, started the whole trying to create their own stuff and sell it online so it'll definitely no, help definitely. a lot of people. And, and, and this is for everyone if if you if you think I can help out in any way shape or form uh, feel free to reach out uh, 
if there's any way I can help in manufacturing, if there's any way I can help in uh, whatever way, I personally, I'd love to do whatever I can. Yeah, so thank you so much. I'll see you about and hopefully thank when you. this gets over, we can finally have a look at your store. Uh, and have a beer. And together. yes, yes, definitely. Well, huh. uh, All right, man. yeah, see Take you about. See you about. Bye. Bye.